Hello and welcome to SchoolofFlash.com. In today's tutorial I want to talk a little bit about the new 3D features in Flash CS4. And I should start off by saying that Flash CS4 does not support a full-blown 3D environments with 3D characters that move around in 3D space or anything like that. What it does support is the ability to take flat objects and move it around and rotate it in 3D space. So we can take this uh, school of flash text here and we can move it closer to us or further away from us as well as to the left and right and up and down. And uh, one of the most obvious places where we can actually edit the 3D options is in our properties panel. Now we don't see any 3D options now because we are dealing with a text field. Before we can perform any 3D transformations we need to convert this to a movie clip. So with this text field selected I'm going to hit F8 to convert it to a movie clip. I'll just call this SOF for School of Flash. We'll click on OK and now it's a movie clip. Now that it's a movie clip we can see that we have some 3D options here in our properties panel and we can click on those to expand those. And you'll notice that we have some 3D transformation options here. We have options for X, Y, Z coordinates, for width and height, uh, for the location of the camera itself, and we're not really going to talk about the camera today. But then we have this vanishing point option, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But with the X and Y coordinates, if we click and drag on those, it's simply going to move it left and right, and up and down. Nothing fancy there. Now one thing you'll notice is once you play with these 3D positions here, you suddenly have these little lines in the center of your of your movie clip. There's a green line and a red line and then there's also a blue line that you can't see uh, because it's basically pointing towards us. The blue line represents the z-axis which allows you to move objects closer to and further away from the camera. So if we come up here to the z coordinate and drag back and forth you'll notice if we drag to the left it's coming closer to the camera. If we click and drag to the right it's moving further away from the camera. So we have our X, Y, Z coordinates. We can move it around in 3D space. Uh, now down here we have our options for the vanishing point. And if we click and drag around on these vanishing point options, we can see this little crosshair that shows up. And as we click and drag that crosshair around, what we're doing is we're changing the vanishing point of our 3D object. And, uh, and the best way to explain what that means is just to show it to you. So let's drag this vanishing point to the left and then up by dragging the Y value to the left. And so our vanishing point is now up here. So now when we change the Z coordinate, notice that it's moving towards that vanishing point when we click and drag to the right. When we click and drag to the left, it's moving closer to us and away from that vanishing point. So that's how that vanishing point works. Now there are definitely other 3D options we can explore. So let's close uh, this particular section of our properties panel. In fact, one thing we can do here is we can click reset to send it back to where we started. And uh, the next thing I want to look at is the 3D rotation tool up here on the toolbar. If we click on that, you'll notice that we now have a number of new handles on our movie clip. We have a green handle, which is just a horizontal bar, a red handle, which is the uh, vertical bar, and then a blue handle going around. And these are basically our three different axes that we can rotate our, uh, our object on. The red axis is the x-axis. If we click and drag up and down, or I'm sorry, we click on the red bar and then drag around in a circle, we can rotate around that x-axis. And so once you get it to an angle you want, you can just release, and there we go. We can hit Control-Z if we want to undo. If we click on the green horizontal bar and drag around, you'll notice that we're rotating around the y-axis. So if we get to a point that we like there, we can click and release. There we go. We can hit control Z again to undo that. And then we have the the blue, uh, the z-axis here that goes around the outside of the red and green. And if we click on the blue and drag, you'll notice it's moving around the z-axis. And we can actually do any combination of rotations here. If we rotate it around the z-axis and then grab the red axis and rotate it, then we can grab the green axis and rotate it a little bit in order to, you know, come up with whatever custom effect we're going for. I'll say control z a few times. And then the last thing we have is this orange 
circle going around the uh, the entire thing. If we click on that orange circle and start dragging, then we kind of have a free form uh, rotation. So I'm still clicking and dragging, and you'll notice that we can actually customize how this rotates. And we'll just click and drag it around until we get it where we want it. Like so. So those are a few of the um, 3D option. I'm going to hit Control Z there. Notice that we also have the 3D translation tool, which does basically what the 3D position and view do in the properties panel. We can just click and drag on the Y axis to move it up and down, the X axis to move it uh, left and right. And then we have this little blue dot here. We can click and drag on that to move it closer to or further away from the camera. Okay, so now that we've talked about all that, let's talk very quickly about how we can actually animate something in 3D using ActionScript. So I'm going to create a new layer here. I'm going to click on our object, our movie clip. I'm going to give this an instance name of SOF underscore MC. And then we'll jump to our Actions layer. Let's go ahead and rename that. Actions. We'll click on frame one for that Actions layer and hit Option F9 to open up our Actions, or just F9 if you're using a PC. So our Actions panel opens up here. I'm going to minimize this left-hand bar, and we'll just type in our code. So what I want to do is I want to create an interframe event that's going to constantly be rotating this around a certain axis. So we're simply going to type in Add Event with a capital E, Listener with a capital L, and then inside parentheses, we're going to do an interframe event. So that's event with a capital E dot enter underscore frame, comma, space, and then we'll type in the name of the function that we want to run every time we enter the frame. So this function is going to run over and over again. So let's just call it uh, rotate 3D. Close your parentheses, semicolon to end your statement. So we'll skip a couple lines, and now we need to create our function called rotate 3D, since that's what we called it up here. So function rotate 3D inside the parentheses here, since this is being triggered by an event listener, we need to put an event variable here. I'm just going to call it E, and then we'll say colon event, close your parentheses, and then I'm going to type colon void to let Flash know that this, fun this function is not going to return any values. So then we'll put our opening and closing curly brackets, and in between those curly brackets, we're going to type in the code to rotate around the, let's say, the x-axis. Well, the way we do that is we point to the movie clip, which is called SOF underscore MC dot, and then there's an option for rotation X, rotation Y, and rotation Z. Um, but I'm going to actually rotate around the X axis, so I'm going to choose rotation X, and I'm simply going to increase that value by, let's say, 4. So rotation X plus equals 4. So every time we enter the frame, we're going to increase that rotation by 4 degrees, and hopefully this will cause it to animate. We'll hit Control enter to test that. And sure enough, it's rotating, but it's not rotating in the way that we want it. You'll notice that it's rotating around the top edge, and that's not what we want. So how can we fix that? Well, it's actually very easy. Let's close our preview. Let's close our actions, or just minimize our actions for now and bring them down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on our movie clip, actually we'll double click to go into that movie clip, and we want to put the origin of the movie clip in the center of the, of the actual content of that movie clip. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to select the text field, I'm going to open up the Align panel, so I'll go to the Window menu and open up Align. I'm going to make sure that Two Stage is turned on. Once it's turned on, I'm going to click on Align Vertical Center and align horizontal center. So now, we can close that align panel, now we can see the origin of that movie clip is in the very center. So that's all we really needed to do. We can hit command enter, and there we go. We have it rotating around the x-axis. Now if we want to, we can get crazy and rotate around multiple axes at the same time. So we can open up our actions here, and we need to actually go back to scene one. We'll click on scene one in the edit bar and then we'll click on frame one of our actions layer and we want to rotate not just the X coordinate but also the Y so let's just copy this line of code control C command C we'll paste it on the next line and then I'll just change this to rotation Y so control enter to test or command return on a Mac and there we go we're rotating around two axes at the same time so you can play around with those numbers you can also play around with the rotation Z uh, to come up with a number of different effects. Um, so hopefully that'll help to get you started playing around with 3D in Flash CS4.